watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is a track test. Even though right now we're we're on the road. Yeah. Look at that! This is the new Audi RS6. Possibly the ultimate family hauler. Or this is the AMG E63S. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I think this is the best overall vehicle in the world. It's sensational at every single thing that it does. And just about the only vehicle that could make me second guess that is the one that James is in. And Thomas is right to second guess it because the RS6 has all of those things. Comfortable and quiet when you want it to be. The transmission, the eight speed is almost telepathic. The power delivery is bang on. It has the potential to be the ultimate everyday driver. You could easily take this across the country and back and never complain. But all of that's true of an Audi A6. This one is equipped with an RS badge, which second gear, third gear, fourth gear, among other things, gives it a top speed with the carbon ceramic brake package of 190 miles an hour. So we can't possibly achieve the limits of these cars on the road legally, which is why you need to turn on to a track. So, two German performance wagons line up on our drag strip. The E63S, generously donated for this video by PJ's Auto Spa, and the RS6 by Eurocharged Canada. These are masters of versatility. Unlike James, who, while great at, I don't know, quoting Lord of the Rings, is useless at pretty much everything else. What? Huh? So let's find out what happens when you put a 603 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque all-wheel drive monster against the new lighter kit on the block with 591 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque. If you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. So subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, before you potentially destroy me in a drag race, I will. let it be known that the Audi wins by default because it looks that much better. No, it doesn't. Yes, it, it do does. No, it doesn't. And that doesn't, that's not even because the Nardo Grey. The Nardo Grey is very right. good. You, can't, you can't have an Audi without mentioning Nardo Grey. Yeah. Uh, what I can mention though is this little design thing here, which is from the Quattro, I think. It's on yeah, the R8. Yeah, but it, it highlights the grille. Uh, thank you for directing everyone's attention to the express toll route transponders that have been glued to the front of your grill. No, it's, it's, what? It's, look! You hide them. Beautiful. Admittedly, it's not the best look, but that's like saying someone's elbows are too pointy. <laughs> You've got to look at the rest of it. No, it is. The proportions, look at the rear haunches. It, it has a stance like nothing I've ever they've seen They've swelled in a wagon. the fenders. It's so different to the A6. They've swelled the fenders by yeah. four centimeters. Yeah. My, my fenders swell just looking at it. <laughs> okay. Whereas this with all its drift mode capabilities, yes. doesn't have a very aggressive rear. Well, well, also, don't forget, this is the, the newest version of this is not in Canada yet. We don't have it. No. It is mechanically exactly the same. But just with a facelift. But just with a facelift. It's going to have the Panamericana grille, right? But otherwise, this has some aftermarket accents, which I think actually look pretty awesome. That's normally chrome and stuff, right? I think, look, I think it's a stunning car. Yeah. I just, I just think this just takes it to another level. Look at the headlights. The headlights are very cool. I also have good-looking headlights. No, but there seems to be an issue with these. 
Do they come free with the condensation for the extra money on this It's car? a feature. It's a feature? Yeah, you actually can use this as a greenhouse and grow some plants sure to offset your carbon dioxide. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure it could. That's what the buy means in buy turbo. For, yeah. It's like bio. For, yeah, for bio. Yeah. Okay, so Mercedes quality isn't quite what it used to be no. in the past, but the interiors are both amazing in these They cars. are fantastic. I find the Audi to be more intuitive. However, more importantly, this is a twin turbo V8, similar to the RSQ8, and this is also a twin turbo V8. Answer a couple questions for me. Yeah. This has pretty much the same power as the RSQ8. Yes. Same engine. Yeah. It has the same rear seat room, more or less, as yeah. the RSQ8. Yeah. It has the same cargo room Correct. as the RSQ8. Yes. Why would you ever get an RSQ8? Because people want to be high up when they drive. That's stupid. It's it, stupid. It is, but, but the, because the first person said that, this, of the crossover world, yeah. it's like standing up at the front of a music hall. Once someone stands up, at a concert, you have to stand you up have as to well. Stand up, yes. And that's what happened. That's in, dumb. in a world where that didn't happen, wagons are the best. And growing up in England, yeah. they, I don't, you know, maybe I was weird, but they, first of all, they're called estates, not wagons. Estates, yeah. And they were never that cool. But performance wagons, as I have moved to North America, I've been here almost eight years. Yeah. I, I get it, especially when the world is moving towards SUVs. They're the coolest, is what they are. It just now. does everything. It just does everything well. It's, it, they're, they're amazing. So just, also, just remember that, re regardless of what happens in, in this next race. Because <laughs> this is better and it does everything well. Get in your car. All right, this is no time for excuses. However, if I was to make one excuse, that's an AMG S. This is an RS6. So like an M competition, the S is, is kind of the top top. Audi have RS performance cars, and there's a rumor that there's gonna be an RS6 performance coming. So even though this is sub 600 horsepower and he's north of 600 horsepower, take that into account, you know, just in case. If he does win, even though, you know, it's all about gearing and how it puts the power down, but if he does win, I have something special planned. And it would be a first in throttle house history, so, uh, See, see if I need to do it. Race mode, left foot of the brake, right foot of the throttle, and this has the most insane launch control of any wagon ever. Here we go. Okay, here we go, here we go. And it back. Oh, good launch by Thomas. Oh, that's a punch in the back. And I'm gone. Yeah. No, he's walking me! He's walking me! Bye-bye. Oh my god, this car's fast. Stupid bloody E63S! <sighs> <sighs> oh, testosterone. Oh my god, this, comf this car is so comfortable at speed. I feel like I'm just on the highway. Oh. Just want to say, that's probably the most comfortable I've got to 200 kilometers an hour. That was, this thing is so fast. Real fast, yeah. Oh my god, it's like, whoa, it's like Hellcat levels of intensity oh, too. You've got to love the performance in this. You did win. I did win, yes. And. Uh, We'll do a roll race, okay. just, to, just yeah. to see. Yeah. But then I just want to try one more tick, just, just for, just for testers. All right, yeah, you're testers. gonna lose, but testies. all right. Just for testies. We keep the outtakes on them here on Throttle House. We keep them. Okay, roll. Here we go. Here we go. And down. Go on, Audi. Oh, he's walking me. That stupid pink bloody thing. Okay, all right, so an E63S is quicker. It's time to do something about that. So while Thomas was distracted checking that the footage of his win was recorded, I asked the owner of this car if there was anything he could do about me losing, given that he's one of the owners of Eurocharged Canada, a custom tuning shop here in Toronto. And just like how the guy at the iPhone store in the shopping mall jailbreaks your iPhone, in a matter of minutes, he'd plugged in his laptop and simply changed some of the software parameters. Unfortunately, Thomas wasn't distracted quite long enough. You tuned it, didn't you? Uh, 
That's Eurocharge. I know that's Eurocharge Canada's I've car. I've, and he's I've here. never tuned. He's here. I know you tuned that. I never tuned a car before. Why? I know you didn't, but the guy did from your. I saw him fiddle with it. What happens after Why that? Why else would we be doing this race? Because you two... The wind changed. I'm still going to win. All right. Yeah, I, tu I tuned it. In the middle of nowhere on a racetrack, I tuned... Yeah, we do. It's tuned. It's tuned. It's tuned. Here we go. Oh, that's a launch! God, son! And oh my God. Oh, where's the E63S gone? Where's he going? What the hell? He's walking away. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh wow, we. All right, maybe it's time to tune the S4. Holy hell. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, is that an E300? What just happened? How much more horsepower and torque did it give it? As it turns out, the tune meant that this RS6 was producing around 800 horsepower and 900 pound-feet of torque. My adrenaline's still going from that. <laughs> In a family wagon. Oh, it feels good. You smoked me! That launch? It felt like we were in a G-Wagon. It just went, whoa! Oh, my God. Okay, track time. That's what I'm going to make up something. I don't know I don't what I'm going to make even up. It matters. But... The fact that you can do this, and it's the best road car ever. Tra track. We're track. <laughs> track. Track. <laughs> Before we hit the track, I told James he had to put it back to stock power. Because numbers aren't everything. And really, we wanted to find out which car provided more fun out of the box at the limit. But that didn't stop James from celebrating. Yeah, I'm wearing my Howdy Victory hat. Okay, I, I did cheat a little bit. Let's see how this drives. Okay, right off the bat. This is very different to my S4. In fact, any Audi we've driven. And we've rocked an RS3 around this same track. It's got some very Audi things in a good way. The steering's a little bit light and dynamic, but oh my God, the accuracy. What are Audi doing? It's like they just come from a lineage of archers. It's unbelievable. The suspension in this car is so sophisticated. It's, it's really fantastic. The fact that you can come off of a road trip or do a drag strip and just feel entirely comfortable the entire time and then hit the track and it just works. Some Audis just feel like cars on a track and that they deserve to be on the road. This, thankfully, is so good to be able to say it. It really works here. Now, having just got out of it tuned, I don't want to say stock power is underwhelming, but knowing what it can do is absurd. In stock form, it's not insane power, but it is a lot. Now I'm covering the track very quickly. On the road, this is so much more than you could ever need. But that's the whole point of the RS. Okay, so James cheated, but he can't cheat out here because this is, ignore the wagon, ignore the fact that it's an E-Class, this is one of the best driving AMGs or German cars I've ever driven. This drives better than, than almost every car out there. The turn-in is like face ripping. The steering is fantastic, it's sharp. There's more feedback than anything the BMW is doing right now. And the way that the power is delivered is so predictable. Today is four liter twin turbo V8 day. In this one, that is a particularly good one of those. In the sound, listen to the downshifts. Oh my god, it's like Darth Vader. You don't know the power of the 
dark side. So obviously this is unbelievably good. Even on the track and it's a family car. But if you're spending well over $100,000 on a wagon, I want it to have some pretty serious tricks up its sleeve. And it does. This has drift mode. That means at the push of a button, or about five buttons actually, you gotta like hold the paddles down and do a whole sequence, you can decouple the front axle and it becomes purely rear wheel drive. And then this unassuming family wagon becomes one of the craziest tire killers I've ever driven. This is the easiest car I have ever slid around. Long wheelbase, perfect weight distribution, metric crap tons of power. <laughs> it's the power delivery actually that makes this the easiest to slide. It's just so linear. Here's a line that I bet you didn't expect me to say. This does skids easier than an M2 competition and a Supra because the wheelbase is long. It's just unbelievable. And I've got active bolstering. It's holding me in as I go around the corner. Ventilated seats, a heated steering wheel, and enough room to do skids with the kids in the back. So you and the kids can make skid marks. That drift mode looks fun, huh? So when Audi Sport Head of Technical Development was asked why the RS6 doesn't have drift mode, he told Autoblog, and I have the quote here, no drift mode, not in the R8. Not in the RS3, not in the RS6, and not in the RS4. I don't like them. I do not see reason for them. We do not see sense in sitting there burning the back tires. It's not fast. He must be fun at parties. So as a result, we don't have drift mode, but it can send up to 85% of its power to the rear wheels. But does that result in any track back-end fun? You know what? A little bit. It doesn't want to do it, though. It doesn't want to do it. It can do it. Steven, your bundle of fun, you've prevailed in your mission because it clearly doesn't compare to that E63S. Although I know Thomas has been up at night dreaming, wondering if an Audi, especially this one, can oversteer. So he's going to have a good go of it in a bit. Like a lot of VAG products, it is absolutely proving its capability, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem to be doing it with that much theatre. And I'm looking over at Thomas, every time he turns a corner, there's a new Pope! No idea how much smoke is coming out the back, but feels like it's a lot. So, I love this, it's amazing, but that RS6 is the new kid on the block, and I'm gonna go try it. Oh wow, yeah, that turns in better than any Audi I've ever driven. Easily better than any Audi I've ever driven, other than an R8, but it doesn't have the hooliganism of that ANG, it just doesn't. But what happens when you really coax it sideways? That's not bad, you know? <laughs> that's not power oversteer. That's just using the natural balance of the car to hang the, uh, hang the ass end out. And you know what? It does work. This is the best balance Audi I've ever driven. 
But from a dynamics perspective, the Mercedes takes it, full stop. This car is alive. It's alive in the way the Audi is not. And I love that Audi, and on the road, it'd probably still be my choice, but on the track, the AMG stands for holy shit. <laughs> This just makes me want to concoct the perfect wagon. The RS6 looks, the RS6 interior, I think I'd just take it. This engine and drivetrain and chassis, but with the ride and the comfort of the Audi. Somewhere between these two is the absolute perfect wagon. As it stands, I don't think I've driven two cars recently that command their price so very well because they just give you everything. And we said that about the Urus, but the Urus cost more than double. And I think it'd be crazy to get an Urus over these, actually, unless you want to be high up on the road, in which case you've not even got to the 18th minute of this video. <laughs> But you have, so you probably share the same appreciation we do for these types of cars and the performance they can deliver. And because of that, while we usually include hot laps whenever we are at our test track, the temperatures were just a bit too cold and the tires weren't quite fresh enough to make it fair. But perhaps next season the updated sedans can show us what numbers these platforms are really capable of. Their wagon counterparts, though, remain the esteemed way to combine real performance with massive amounts of practicality. And even though today proved the AMG to be the hooligan of the two, and in true Audi fashion, the RS6 perhaps the more comfortable road car, the fact that you can buy all out near 200 mile an hour V8 wagons may soon become history. So right now, it's something to celebrate. And a massive thank you to Michelin Canada for replenishing the tires that Thomas destroyed this very day. Thanks for watching.